Um, we've got great pleasure to have the esteemed physician, Dr. Joel Furman, here. He's on the board of directors of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and a director of research for the Nutritional Research Project of the National Health Association in the US. He's a board-certified family physician and a best-selling author. He specializes in preventing and reversing disease through nutritional methods and will now talk to us on how plant-based diets can prevent and even reverse some of the most prevalent chronic diseases. I think this is going to be another, following a wonderful morning and some great discussions over lunch, another wonderful keynote speech. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, exciting to be here and exciting that the World Preservation Foundation invited me for this um, event. And the theme of this presentation is that the diseases that afflict the modern world are preventable and people do not have to have heart attacks. They don't have to have strokes. They don't have to be demented when they get older. And we can win the war on cancer. Nutritional science has advanced to the point today, especially in the last 20, 25 years, we actually have a complete new revolution in the history of nutrition, where we actually can find out what are the causes of these chronic conditions that afflict most of the modern world. And right now, these diseases of nutritional ignorance are overwhelming the healthcare systems all over the world and not just affecting human tragedy, but laying down economic, how we should say it, um, economic stress and putting the economies in, in trouble due to the growing amount of people that are overweight, diabetic, and with heart disease. So that is an introduction. Let's get started. I'm going to give you a basic understanding of the major concepts in human nutrition today. And that is food gives us macronutrients and micronutrients. And macronutrients are those nutrients that contain calories, fat, carbohydrate, and protein. And in the history of nutritional science, it's been proven, and I use the word proven in a scientific sense, to mean reproducible in hundreds of different studies with all species of animals, including primates. It's been essentially proven that the less calories we consume and the reduction in calories can dramatically extend lifespan. That means that one of the most largest contributors to disease in the modern world is the excess consumption of calories. That's the excess consumption of fat, the excess consumption of carbohydrate, and the excess consumption of protein. Now, given that, we also re require a certain amount of micronutrients. The micronutrients are those nutritional factors that do not contain calories. Those micronutrient factors that are calorie free, like vitamins and minerals, and of course phytochemicals, which are a major part of the, the non-caloric load in food, critical for human health. In 1930, scientists discovered 14 vitamins and 16 minerals. And people thought, wow, this is great, right? We could prevent people from getting cancer. We can have people be healthier and live longer. But it didn't work out that way. By 1935, the vitamin supplement industry was already a billion dollar industry. They were already adding thiamine and riboflavin and other factors to processed foods like cocoa puffs. People were taking vitamin pills. By between 1935 and 2005, during that 70 year stretch, cancer rates went up for 70 years in a row, unabetted and accompanied by a dramatic increase in obesity and autoimmune conditions, and of course, heart disease and diabetes. But the most stri striking and fascinating event was the incredible epi epidemic and explosion of cancer rates all over the world since the, we could say, the micronutrient revolution. And it wasn't until about 20 years ago where scientists first recognized that vitamins and minerals were not the major micronutrient load that was in food, that phytonutrients were, or phytochemicals were. What I'm saying here now is that this third class of newly discovered micronutrients, now called phytochemicals, overwhelm vitamins and minerals. And they're where all the science is at lately, because we're actually finding out that these antioxidants and these phyto newly discovered phytonutrients have a broad spectrum of effects on the human immune system and the ability to repair broken DNA crosslinks that could lead to cancer and prevent cells from being damaged by cancer-causing agents. In other words, we're designed to function on a full spectrum of nutrients that are found in whole natural foods. When we process foods, we destroy those delicate nutrients that are in natural foods. And we don't get them, and our bodies can't function normally, laying ourselves exposed to diseases that are now afflicting the modern world. So keep in mind the simple health equation, H equals N over C, 
means that a person's health, their healthy life expectancy, and the word healthy life expectancy, as defined by the World Health Organization, is not just how long you're going to live, but the quality of your life in the last 10 or 15 years of life, whether you have your full mental faculties intact, right? Whether you are in pain, undergoing uncomfortable medical procedures, whether you have your full physical abilities. In other words, you want to live your life not just longer, but better, with better enjoyment and with pleasure. And that H, that healthy life expectancy score, is affected most by the micronutrient per calorie density of your diet. That means, are you getting the micronutrients you need in the fewest amount of calories? Are you getting the micronutrients you need to have a normal immune system so you don't, so you don't get cancer, so you don't get demented, and so you don't develop heart disease or have a stroke? So what I'm saying here to start out is that your health is dependent on the micronutrient bang per caloric guck. You have to eat less calories, but you have to make sure when you do so, you achieve micronutrient adequacy, especially the adequacy of antioxidants and phytochemicals. You following this so far? To do that, you have to eat more foods that are higher in micronutrients and less foods that are low in micronutrients, right? You have to eat a diet with micronutrient adequacy. You have to eat the right foods. Now look at the way the UK is eating. It's not much different than the way they're eating in the United States today. Actually, in the UK, I think it says they're eating 58% of calories from processed foods today. That may have been 10% 100 years ago. Now it's 58%. The processed foods are things like white flour products, like cupcakes and bagels and crackers and cookies and pretzels and soft drinks and processed foods and bar bars and rice cakes and, you know, breakfast cereals, oils and sugars and soft, you know, we're, in other words, we're living on foods that have no nutrients, that have no antioxidants. And then in, in America, that percent is up to 63% already of a percent of total caloric intake. Just 10 years ago, it was below 50%. Now, the animal product intake in the UK is even greater than in, the, in America, because that's 26% in America, it's 27.5% in the UK today. But here's the thing. I'm saying that an animal product, like chicken or meat, is just like a bagel or a piece of white bread. Why am I saying that? Why am I saying a piece of chicken is like a piece of white bread? How come? Anybody know? Because they both don't contain mic many micronutrients. They're both, def they're both grossly deficient in micronutrients, and neither one has phytochemicals. Let me say that one more time, OK? Because what I'm saying here is that a strawberry doesn't have 31 nutrients. A strawberry has over 700 different nutrients. A piece of broccoli has over 1,000 important nutrients for your, for your health, All right? But processed foods do not contain those antioxidant vitamins and minerals like vitamin C and vitamin E and vitamin K and the, and the carotenoid family, like lutein and lycopene and cryptoxanthine, and the lignins and the bioflavonoids and the phytochemicals that prevent cancer are not found in processed foods. And you know what? They're not in animal products either. These plant-derived nutrients that we're finding in modern science that give us the ability to control our health destiny, they're giving us the ability to have a, a unique and unprecedented opportunity in human history to live longer and better than ever before in the history of the human race. But we have to take advantage of this recent science. Years ago, we thought nutritional science just meant taking some vitamin C so we didn't get scurvy, or vitamin D so we didn't get rickets. If we tried to figure out what things we were missing would create deficiencies. And now, nutritional science has advanced to a completely different realm. Now we're finding out what, what nutrients we should consume, not just to prevent disease, but to extend human life and to prevent the development of the diseases of aging that people are suffering from. You following this so far? So in the UK, this is showing that, there, that the produce consumption is about 11% comes from natural, unrefined plant foods, and about half of that is white potato. And white potato, including, consumed as French fries and chips and, and uh, mashed potatoes. In other words, white potato is the lowest micronutrient density of any vegetable, and if we remove that, the rest of the, the nuts and the seeds and the beans and the mushrooms and the onions and the green vegetables and sweet potatoes, all the other fresh fruits and all the other natural plant foods would be less than 5% of total intake in the UK and in America. Now, 100 years ago, to say that we could win the war on heart disease, to say to you, how much is that worth to you if you don't ever have to have a heart attack or a stroke or get demented? Is that worth a million pounds? Is that worth um, 10 million? Come on, what is, you know? By the way, do we take, um, personal checks and credit cards in the back. But the point here is, this is an opportunity that everyone has to avail themselves of, right? 
that you all have to take advantage of. And this is not something radical to think that people can protect themselves against these diseases that afflict almost all people in the modern world. If we saw 100 years ago, right? 100 years ago, these diseases hardly even existed. Early man did not get cancer. That's a recent disease of modern history. We actually can do, they actually do studies on mummies and, and people who were unearthed, you know, that died thousands of years ago. There were none of these diseases that afflict people today. So it's not a, a big stretch here to say that people don't have to have heart disease. And we're finding out when we apply modern nutritional science to give people diets that are very micronutrient rich, their heart disease, their, their weight melts away, the fat on their body melts away, and their heart disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol go away as well. If they were having chest pains, if they have blockages in their heart, they don't have to have angioplasty and bypass surgery. They can be free of pain in a few months just from adopting a diet of nutritional excellence. Now this slide, I didn't make this slide, I just cut and pasted it from the American Heart Association's website to show that 100 years ago in America, less than 4% of the population died of heart attacks, which is now close to 40%. And even in the UK today, more than 50% of the population is dying of heart attacks and strokes and these diseases of nutritional stupidity. So most people in, in, these, in modern countries die of diseases of nutritional ignorance. And this explosion in the rate of overweight and obesity is taking its toll on the economic systems. And with a potential morbidity and mortality and suffering, there's a tremendous amount of benefit we can get to the modern world by people actually learning about nutrition. But people go through elementary school and colleges and universities, and they don't learn the most critical factors they could have learned to protect their health destiny. They never find out about, right? And now obesity and diabetes and heart disease is now having more of a toll on the world, on, on the world and more people are, are suffering and dying from these diseases of nutritional excess there, than our people are dying from diseases of smoking cigarettes and using illegal drugs combined. And more people are dying of these diseases of nutritional excess compared to people that are starving from not enough calories. So you can just look at this slide, the, preven the prevalence of diabetes worldwide and how it's exploding. And it doesn't have to be. We're eating too many calories and fat has is a biological living mass that produces hormones that accelerates the, the rate at which you promote that heart disease develops and, and increases your risk of cancer. It's fat on the body is dangerous. And one of the themes of this presentation right now is that the micronutrient deficits from eating processed foods and animal products with the insufficient consumption of plant-derived phytonutrients from natural whole plant foods drives overeating behavior. Let me say that one more time. I'm claiming here that the lack of proper micronutrients by multiple mechanisms fuels the body's cravings, addictions, and drive to increase its caloric in intake, leading to the obesity epidemic. So as we eat more foods that are rich in micronutrients, we automatically and naturally desire less food. So we're talking about people requiring less and desiring less as a means of controlling their health and their weight. And that when you choose to eat a diet of predominantly processed foods and animal products, you desire more and you often can't control your desire to overconsume calories because you feel ill if you don't overconsume calories because that's what the word addiction means. Addiction means that you feel okay when you're doing it, but you try to stop it and you feel uncomfortable or get pain. You might get shaky, weakness, headaches, confusion, fatigue, stomach cramping, but you feel ill unless you keep, unless you keep eating. So we're going to discuss that briefly, okay? So the cost of dietary-related disease in the UK alone is predicted to be over 19 billion pounds over the next 10 years. And, these, and these, all this money is potentially saved by the, by the, obviously by the healthcare system. So seven out of 10 deaths now are caused by chronic diseases directly related to what people eat. Now, but we can group both heart disease and cancer together because it's not one diet that causes heart disease and strokes and another diet that causes cancer. The same diet that leads to the reversal and, predict and protection from heart attacks and strokes is the same diet that will prevent people from getting cancer, right? We have to recognize that the, the proper diet here to prevent disease has to be rich in natural plant foods, and we have to understand what plant foods have give us the most protection, right? So we're talking here about eating a diet rich in natural foods, and vegetables, of course, afford the most protection. And the foods that are highest in micronutrients, of course, are green vegetables, right? So what's the food that's most powerfully linked to the protection against heart disease? 
In other words, what's the food that you would eat the most of to reverse and protect yourself from heart disease? And the answer is green vegetables. The foods would have the highest micronutrient per calorie density. What's the food that would be, offer you the most protection against cancer of all foods? And the answer is green vegetables, right? The foods that mostly the primates eat. If you followed a primate like a monkey around in the woods with a telephoto lens, looking for everything they ate for the month, and scientists do that, go back to the laboratory and calculate exactly what they eat, they find they consume 15 times as much of the micronutrients compared to the RDIs that, Ameri that Americans and people are not consuming and are not even meeting those basic requirements set by governments. We're not even meeting those requirements, anywhere near meeting them. Yet the wild animals in the woods consume 10 to 20 times that much because their diet is so rich in these very high phytonutrient green vegetables. And of course we're talking here about the power of seeds and berries and mushrooms and onions to have factors that actually prevent the expression of the gene defects that could lead to cancer. When you have a diet rich in mushrooms and onions and green vegetables, those gene defects that may increase the risk of breast cancer or colon cancer or prostate cancer are suppressed by the high intake of the phytochemicals. The human body has been designed in a manner to protect itself against these diseases. It already has the right mechanisms. We are our miraculous, self-healing, self-protecting machine designed to live essentially from birth to an uneventful death. And we could live 15 to 25 years longer than we're living today by putting into action these, these, um, these advances in modern nut nutritional science. One advance here, again, is the fact that seeds and nuts protect against sudden cardiac death. Most people consume 400 calories a day from oil. Now I'm saying here that walnut oil is not the same thing as a walnut, and almond oil is not the same thing as an almond. When you eat the whole food, when you get your fat from the whole food, like nuts or seeds, it has marked effects to stabilize the heart against irregular heartbeats. And, and except for, um, as opposed to gaining weight with oil, because that 120 calories a tablespoon gets absorbed very rapidly and stored away in the body as fat. When you take the fat from a whole food, like an almond or a walnut or a sesame seed, all those calories aren't biologically available. The sterols and stanols, like a sponge, bind the fat in the stool so it's excreted, and it actually sucks some of those negative fats, like LDL cholesterol, out of the body from the bloodstream back into the digestive tract for removal in the stool. We're saying here that nuts and seeds actually help prevent and reverse diabetes and help prevent and reverse heart disease and have beneficial effects on both morbidity and mortality. So one key element here is getting less fat from processed food and more fat from whole natural plant foods like seeds and nuts. Now one of the recent findings in the modern nutritional science is that, that we shouldn't eat excess nutrients, excess macronutrients like fat, carbohydrate, and protein, right? But one of the most critical nutrients to focus on here is protein because we've been brainwashed or educated with wrong information. For some people, they kind of thought that protein was to be held in such high esteem because it facilitates growth and promotes growth hormone, right? But now we're finding that the more growth hormone, and especially IGF-1, the insulin-like growth hormone that's produced by the excess consumption of animal protein, is one of the primary factors leading to the tremendous increase in risk in breast cancers and prostate cancers and colon cancer. Let me say this one more time. I'm saying that when we take an animal under a controlled environment and we restrict their calories so they stay relatively thin, one of the, one of the biological mechanisms via which their lifespan is enhanced is by lower amounts of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, which protects them against getting cancer. When we restrict humans' calories so they be, stay relatively thin, we do not see those same benefits as IGF-1 going down if they still consume a lot of animal protein as they hold back their calories. You have to be, to see the benefits here, in order for people to maximize their opportunity for longevity, we have to make sure they don't consume too much of biological, high biological protein. Because the more high biological protein you eat, the higher your insulin-like growth factor one will be, and the stronger the risk of breast cancer and colon cancer. And it's this factor alone that accounts for some of these major explosion in the rates of breast cancer and prostate cancer in the last 50 years in modern countries. 
because protein was brainwashed or advertised to us as being a favorable nutrient, and we thought it represented wealth and health, and we tried to consume more of it, and we've wound up causing a sparking, an epidemic of cancer because of it. So animal protein raises cholesterol, and plant protein lowers cholesterol, right? Animal protein promotes cancer, and plant protein, of course, reduces the risk of cancer. And also, when you get your protein from plants, especially green plants that are largely protein, right, then you're getting packaged in a high package of high antioxidants and phytochemicals and fibers that are so protective against disease. The ANDI scores, the word ANDI stands for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index, is a tool to help direct people to easily recognize what foods have the most micronutrients. So all I did here to devise the ANDI scores was to add up 23 nutrients that are well studied, right? Nutrients like vitamin E, vitamin C, selenium, zinc, B12, right, folate. We took the 23 nutrients and we added them up to give each food one number so people could easily see one number instead of 23 different numbers to get an overall um, feel, right, for how much micronutrients they contain. And the nice thing here about the Andy scores is that the foods that are, high, that are rated highest in micronutrients in the measurable micronutrients, because don't forget, there are thousands of unmeasurable micronutrients. We can't measure all of them. But the foods that are highest in these measurable micronutrients are also the highest in the ones we can't measure as well. Now, of course, it shows that, you know, comparing white pasta and white bread to a vegetable, it's not the vegetables aren't 10 times as much nutrients. There are 100 times as much nutrients, right? And you can see that animal products and processed foods are relatively low. And I think that's the main the main focus here of the Andy scores and the main benefits are to show and demonstrate how powerful vegetables are at earning people the micronutrients they need to fuel not just adequate health, but excellent health, right? And the Andy facts, these are the 23 parameters which the Andy scores measure, so we can help direct people to make better food choices. Now, putting together a food pyramid for nutritional excellence, and I call it a nutritarian a nutritarian diet or nutritarian food pyramid. I coined that word nutritarian to help people distinguish the type of food they're going to be trying to strive to eat. Because it's not accurate to call it a vegan or vegetarian diet, right? Because if a diet is, doesn't have animal products in it, it still doesn't have to be a healthy diet. The, the merely the absence of animal products does not make a diet healthy. A person on a vegan diet could still be living on processed food and mostly even junk food even, right? I mean, and I'm claiming here that it's not just the explosion of animal products, though that's a, a big part of it, but it's also the tremendous explosion of processed foods that comprise such a large percent of modern diets that, are, that is accountable and resulting in this epidemic of chronic disease we see in the modern world. So if we're going to make a pyramid for people who want excellent health, what should we put at the base of the pyramid? Shouldn't we put the foods that have the best association with long life? Shouldn't we put the foods at the base of the pyramid we want people to do the most of? the foods that have the most micronutrients in them. And so therefore, what happens when you design a pyramid and when you put vegetables at the base? Fruits and beans, nuts and seeds, whole grains, and we restrict the amount of processed foods, and we restrict the amount of animal products to very small amounts in the diet, or not at all. We see then miraculous things happen to people. We see people lose weight and get their health back. After people have suffered for 20, 30 years with diseases, they, they adopt this type of diet and they stop desiring excess calories, and they lose weight almost effortlessly, right? So let me describe for you for a minute how this works and how it prevents the drive to overeat. Think about that the human body cycles between anabolic phases and catabolic phases, right? Anabolic and catabolic. Anabolic means you're building your body up. Catabolic means you're breaking it down, right? In the anabolic phase, you're eating in digestion eating and digesting, right? In the catabolic phase, you're living off of what you stored when you ate. Like you went to the gas station and filled up your, your tank, and now you're driving it around, you're burning up the tank. Well, in the catabolic phase, you're burning off those, that glucose and burning off those fats that you stored when you ate and absorbed it, okay? Now, what happens, though, is that when you eat a diet low in nutrients, you build up certain toxic waste products in your, pro in your body, like free radicals like advanced glycation end products. You build up toxic waste products because you're not taking in the phytochemicals and antioxidants you need for normal function. And then when you stop digesting and you enter the catabolic phase, when you finish digesting a meal, your body starts to go into an enhanced stage of repair 
and self-cleaning and detoxification. And if your diet was unhealthy, if you were eating a diet, like most of the modern world is eating today, with lots of processed foods and lots of animal products, you're going to have lots of nitrogenous wastes and lots of free radicals and lots of toxins build up in your tissues. And when you try not to eat and you go into the catabolic phase, you're not going to feel well. You're going to feel shaky and weak, confused and fatigued, and you're going to have to eat again. You'll, you're forced to eat more food than your body requires. If you ate a healthy diet and you were well nourished with micronutrients and you went to the catabolic phase, you would feel nothing. You wouldn't even feel like eating. I'm claiming here, I'm making a tremendous claim here. I'm saying most people cycle from anabolic phase to anabolic phase. They go right, well, the minute they finish digesting, they want to eat again. They want to have a snack. They want to have another meal. They want to put something in their mouth. They want to have some, right? They can't stop eating. They've lost their connectivity. Their natural instinctive drives that tells them the amount of calories they need to eat to maintain their lean body mass are lost because they become food addicts because of lack of micronutrient quality in their diet. I'm saying micronutrient, the, the, the lack of micronutrient quality drives addictive sensations to overeat. That when you enter, you see the curve goes down, that glucose curve drops, and you enter that catabolic phase, you get what I call toxic hunger, the need to eat again. And most people that become overweight, they become overweight because they don't feel well unless they almost constantly consume calories to prevent the detoxification. It's as if they were trying to stop drinking 10 cups of coffee a day or trying to get off cocaine because they feel too uncomfortable if they try to stop eating or don't overconsume calories. They can solve the, the sensation of toxic hunger by either eating freak, too frequently or eating a big heavy meal with too many calories to keep the digestive tract busy into the, in the anabolic phase until, they, until it's time for their next meal. A healthy person, though, doesn't feel the detoxification stress. Most of you sitting here in the audience today, whether if you could have even skipped lunch, if you're eating a healthy diet, you would feel nothing. You wouldn't have to overeat food. Your body actually develops more metabolic efficiency when you eat a diet rich in micronutrients, and you can maintain your lean body mass with less calories. It enables people to eat less and not feel hungry. And then when, you're, when, the, when, the glyco when the glycogen is burnt off and you've gone through your catabolic phase, before you would burn lean body mass, your body would get a clear signal to eat that I call true hunger. And true hunger is mostly felt in the throat and the mouth, and it's accompanied by dramatic enhancements in taste. So true hunger, marked at the end of the catabolic phase, directs people to the exact amount of calories they require to maintain a long, healthy life and to keep their stable weight for their whole life without gaining weight or losing weight. It helps protect your lean body mass. But here's the point. You can't become overweight. You can't get fat on your body unless you have eaten outside of the demands of true hunger. In order to gain weight, you had to have eaten recreationally or because of the demands of toxic hunger or addictive. And also, there's a feedback loop to the brain that signals the brain to have to increase the desire to consume more calories when you're not meeting your micronutrient needs. So what if society learned about modern nutritional science? And what if 50 to 80 percent of our population, of our elderly population over the age of 60, didn't have to go on medications for diabetes and high blood pressure and cholesterol lowering, right? The medications are like, pres the prescription pads are like permission slips. We've evolved into a society where the medication takes the place of teaching people how to live in a healthy manner, right? And by, giving, and by the medication lowering their blood pressure, lowering their blood sugar, and lowering their cholesterol, people have resolved of all personal responsibility to take care of their health. And inevitably, they follow the same diet that caused the problem to begin with, so the disease process inevitably advances until they die a premature death, right? So what if there are a way to lower cholesterol and drop blood pressure and prevent heart disease that was more effective than taking medications? What if people actually wanted this knowledge and information so they wouldn't have to have happen to them what maybe happened to their father or they had to, to, their, to their neighbor, right? What if you could actually not just control diabetes, but if you could reverse it and make the diabetic non-diabetic without the cost of drugs and without the tragic consequences of diabetes that lead to amputation and blindness and kidney, da kidney damage and heart disease? What if you could avoid angioplasty and bypass surgery, which the meta-analysis do show do not extend lifespan anyway, right? Angioplasty and bypass surgery, which could relieve chest pain, 
find that years down the road, these people who, are, who undergo those procedures don't have less chest pain than people who, didn't have, who weren't treated with those interventions. And they don't live longer either. They're just, stop, they're just temporizing measures. But what if you can reverse those disease and get the person out of pain and back to a normal functioning life again without these futile and expensive medical procedures? And of course, that's what we see happens, not just in one case, but in thousands of cases. And in my presentation later on this afternoon, I'll, I'll describe a lot of those cases. But in this presentation, I want to highlight one, because Ronnie, when it, when the, Ronnie suffered with about five years ago with bypass surgery due to crushing heart chest pain, and he weighed over 300 pounds. In four years' time, the bypass failed, and he had chest pains again, and he couldn't even walk one block. He was rushed back to the hospital, and they put, they put stents in, three angioplasty stents in his heart. Within a month, his stents had reached the nose, and he was back having chest pains again. On more than, on more than $600 of out-of-pocket medical expenses a month, and three medications to lower his blood pressure, which couldn't get his blood pressure down, and three medications to lower his cholesterol, which couldn't get his cholesterol down adequately, and medications to reduce chest pain, that still didn't enable him to walk. He was literally sent home to die. I never met Ronnie, but, he, but through the internet, he found my work, he read my information, he got my, he communicated, and he got educated as to how he could reverse his heart disease. He lost 140 pounds in 12 months, but the story here isn't the weight he lost. The story is that Ronnie doesn't have high blood pressure anymore, and he's on no medication. He doesn't have high cholesterol anymore. His LDL cholesterol is 60 on no medication. It was 230 on three cholesterol-lowering drugs. Well, his total cholesterol was 230 on three cholesterol-lowering drugs. He doesn't have chest pain anymore. He plays tennis, he runs, he works out, he has a full life. He's not sick anymore. He doesn't have heart disease anymore. It melted away. Nutritional excellence does what medical interventions doesn't have the power to do. And, I'm not, and, and my mission here, of course, is to let people know that they have an option, that they don't have to have happen to them what happens to Ronnie Valentine, right? And Ronnie said, I wouldn't want anyone to go through what I had to go through in my life, right, before he learned this information about good nutrition. So Ronnie, one year later, obviously, his scale wasn't 300 pounds. It was much more than that. It's just that his weight, his bathroom, his scale in his house only went to 300 pounds. And of course, his blood pressure on medications was high. Now his blood pressure, one year later, is low on no medications. And of course, see the drop in LDL cholesterol from, that's the most dangerous, the LDL cholesterol is the bad cholesterol. He was 148 on cholesterol-lowering drugs, 75, of course, off drugs. And this is what the study's done. This, this study, the, this high-nutrient, micronutrient diet, and the medical literature, we call it a high-nutrient density diet. In the medical literature, obviously, and published in the medical journal Metabolism, it showed that this plant-based high-nutrient diet lowered LDL cholesterol 33%, which is more powerful than medications. But when you lower it with the nutritional excellence, right, you don't just, you don't get the same effects of lowering cholesterol with a drug, because your cholesterol level is just one of many factors that create heart disease. It's not the only factor, it's not even the most powerful factor. When you lower your cholesterol through excellent nutrition, you drop your body weight down, you get the fat off your body you perfuse your body with nutrients that have anti-inflammatory effects. And when you perfuse your body with those, high, with those nutrients, it activates systems like the NRF2 system in the blood vessels to protect plaque from building up and actually to accelerate the reversal of heart disease. The nutrients have beneficial effects, and it lowers your blood pressure, of course, too, but then these micronutrients have beneficial effects way and above outside of what can be accomplished by cholesterol or medications. Because you can't equate the degree of protection you get, because if you really want to take me up on that, that promise, that guarantee not to have a heart attack or a stroke, it's not good enough to lower your blood pressure with drugs. You have to lower your blood pressure with good nutrition because you earned it. You have to be physically fit. You can't be, very, you can't be overweight. And you have to have a good cholesterol that's not forced down with drugs. You have to have earned it through excellent nutrition. That's how you get the 100 degree of protection. Drugs and, and medications don't give you that degree of protection that nutritional excellence can, that Ronnie Valentine earned, of course. So heart disease, high blood pressure, and even diabetes are diseases that are preventable and reversible, right? Nutritional studies, population studies, epidemiologic studies, right? All support the effectiveness of a healthy plant-based diet to arrest, prevent, and reverse diseases like heart disease. And I've been in practice more than 20 years treating hundreds and hundreds of patients, not just with diseases of high blood pressure and high cholesterol, but people who had high blood pressure and high cholesterol with advanced heart disease people who had chest pain, people who were told they needed to have urgent bypass surgery or urgent angioplasty, who instead chose the nutritional approach. And within months, their pains melt away as they lose weight, as they eat healthy. 
right? In the same amount of time, this person could have been evaluated with a stress test, right? With the, with the angiogram or, or, or catheterization, and then go through bypass and rehab after that, after that expensive and, and invasive procedures. And that same amount of time, a few months later, the people are already feeling better, and their chest pains are going away, and they're well in the same, without those inv invasive and expensive procedures. So nobody needs to die of a heart attack. You don't have to have strokes. Dr. Esselstein, a very renowned physician in the United States, did a series where he followed over 50 people for 17 years, and he followed these individuals who had very advanced heart disease. They weren't just regular people with high blood pressure. These were people who had heart attacks, who had blockages, and he followed them for 17 years who followed a plant-based, excellent plant-based diet, and he found that in this group, these people didn't have future heart attacks. Even the people, and likewise, a group of a, of a similar group of people followed for the same amount of years, had multiple cardiac events, emergency room visits, expensive medical care, repeat, going back to repeat surgeries and interventions. Likewise, Dr. Ornish's work showed the same thing, that as these studies are done, we find that heart disease is not only preventable, but it's reversible. And it's reversible to the extent that you use modern nutritional science to have the most optimal diet style possible. And if you have a disease like diabetes or heart disease or high blood pressure, my question to you is, how excellent is your diet? Are you taking advantage of modern nutritional science to do everything you can? Or are you just relying on popping a pill as your disease is likely to continue to worsen? So to a nutritarian diet, of course, a nutritarian diet is vegetable based, not grain based, not based on oil and white flour. It's based on, of course, green vegetables, mushrooms, onions, lots of fruits, beans, seeds, nuts. Oil is used sparingly. Animal products could be done in a vegan diet or one you use very tiny amounts, like a condiment. But the animal products have to be dropped down dramatically to get the full benefits and lifespan advantages that are available to people today. It's focused on nutrient-dense calories. And the question is, can we take, can we take our best minds, our best chefs, can we make nutrient-rich food taste fantastic? Can we make eating pleasurable, more pleasurable, and protect our health at the same time? Why not, right? Why not have great taste, great fun, and great health together? Why not take advantage and have the best health possible, right? As opposed to being on a race to commit suicide with food, like the rest of the world is, right? Well, it seems as if people, they're so addicted, they're so afraid of being food been taken away from them, that they'll, they'll shovel things in, processed meats, barbecued, luncheon meats, fried foods, any kind of thing in their mouth, regardless of the effect on its health. People gradually, they don't, they, the most important knowledge that they, people could have to control their personal health destiny, more important than wealth, is your health. What good is wealth if you don't have your health? So this, of course, is one of my patients, six months into following the program. We're primates, obviously, and as primates, when we're eating natural plant foods like green vegetables and berries and pine nuts, right? Natural plant foods are naturally low in calories, and the human stomach doesn't have as big a, we don't have as big a stomach as a gorilla. We can't fit that many calories in at one time, right? When you're eating natural plant foods, it's almost impossible to become overweight. We wouldn't have, you don't walk around the woods, right? And you don't see obese squirrels in the woods, right? Unless, they, unless they're in New York City and they're being fed junk food in the parks, right? Then you see obese squirrels. You can make them obese and then you know after a while if you go to the parks in New York City, you see these obese squirrels being fed and you offer them natural foods that they would eat and they'll turn down the natural foods. They'll rather have the high salted, high oily, high greasy, they'll go for the potato chips and the french fries from the fast food restaurants, right? Because they're animals like us, right? And we go for concentrated calories because we sense it sends a rush to the brain, like an addictive rush, a dopamine rush. And we all become addicted, and our taste buds become desensitized, and we get addicted to the most dangerous foods. And the fountain of youth, of course, is eating a plant-based diet containing high micronutrient-containing foods, vegetables, beans, mushrooms, onions. You know, what if there was a medical study that showed that women who ate mushrooms on a daily basis had over 60% lower risk of breast cancer? What if there was such a study? Wouldn't women be running out to eat mushrooms? Shouldn't that be on the front page of the New York Times, or the front, right? What if there was a study that showed that people who ate onions on a regular basis had a 50 to 80% risk of cancers? Wouldn't people be putting onions all over their foods every day? 
What if there was a pill from a drug company that can do that? Wouldn't that drug company be making billions of dollars? Every person be paying a thousand pounds a month to consume those pills to prevent cancer? What if there was a study that showed people who ate green cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and bok choy and kale had dramatically low rates of cancer, even better than mushrooms and onions? Well, these studies exist. These studies are true, right? We have the evidence right now that natural plant foods have dramatic and powerful effect to afford people a unique opportunity to win the war on cancer and to win the war on the chronic diseases that afflict the, the world today, all right? So we're talking here about grossly limiting significant limitations on eating foods that, will, that are detrimental to our health. It's not that hard, and I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking, wow, I'm eating most, right? You know? and, and the point here is that we have to change the way we see food, and we have to recognize that natural foods, whole natural foods grown by the earth, already have been designed with the perfect substances to fuel human species with the ability to live a long, protective, and disease-free life. So I'm offering you that opportunity. Thank you.